This 55-year-old female shows a 5-millimeter soft tissue recession defect on tooth 1-3. The aim of the treatment is to achieve full defect coverage. The distance of the horizontal incisions to the col is defined by the length of the defect. For optimal soft tissue healing, Correct flap design, as shown in this illustration, is important. The area has been anesthetized by local infiltration. The horizontal incision, using a 15C blade, is extended to the adjacent interdental areas a few millimeters coronally to the soft tissue recession margin. Then a suckular incision is done. Two vertically divergent releasing incisions are made starting at the lateral end points of the horizontal incisions. They run apically across the mucogingival junction. A full thickness flap is raised with a mid-size respiratory until either the mucogingival junction is passed or the area three millimeters apical to the bone dehiscence is visible. A horizontal cut is made in the periosteum. The raising of a split thickness flap is continued by blunt dissection. The blunt dissection is extended apically and laterally. The aim is to eliminate any muscle tension on the flap margins and allow for a passive and tension-free coronal positioning of the flap at the CEJ level. To create a connective tissue bed for suturing the coronially advanced flap, the buccal aspects of the interdental papillas are deepithelialized. To ensure the removal of any plaque, calculus, or other irregularities, the root surface is cleaned and smoothened with a periodontal mill. Pre-suturing is carried out at the coronal end of the flap using 5O Vicryl or Supramide suture material. The second pre-suture is adapted to allow a tension-free final flap and wound closure. Little mosquitoes are used to retain the thread ends and to keep the different sutures apart. The vertical releasing incisions are sutured in a tension-free manner. The mobility of the flap must allow access to the root surface for the application of endogain. The flap must also be able to recover the root surface entirely. Pref gel is applied now. The needle is inserted directly into the defect and the exposed root surface is completely coated with Pref gel. The smear layer is removed by conditioning the complete root surface with Pref gel for two minutes. After two minutes, the site is rinsed again with sterile saline solution. All contact with blood, or especially saliva, on the root surface should be avoided. Emdogain comes as a ready-to-use gel in a syringe and is applied immediately. The needle is inserted directly into the defect 
and endogain is injected until it fully covers the exposed and conditioned root surface. The prepared sutures are now tightened. The flap is repositioned coronally and secured, covering the entire defect. It must be verified that the wound closure is tension-free. At this stage of the surgery, the assistance of a well-trained nurse is very helpful. The suturing is completed between the horizontal and vertical incisions. The final result shows good soft tissue adaptation and tension-free wound closure. Clinical experience shows that the application of the remaining endogain to the sutured wound margins can improve wound healing. Another important factor for treatment success is adequate patient instruction. For further information, read the guidelines for use carefully or contact your local Straumann representative.